Hi, this is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. The meaning of the word Kabbalah is receiving. Now, we know that receiving is a very problematic thing because the purpose that we've been sent to this world for is to become as much as we can as like, a, as like the Creator. We need to be as much as we can like Him. And we know that He is giving. We know that He is sharing, we know that He is loving, that He is supporting, that He is... And for us, when we're coming to learn the wisdom of secret, the Pnimiyut, the inner side of the Torah, now for that we need to build our vessels to receive. Now it's weird, it's very weird. So, for that, the main intention that we should have while preparing our hearts to learn the wisdom of secret is to receive with the intention to give later on. That we will understand while receiving the secret that it has not been given to us for ourselves, just for us to continue passing that message to our surroundings, to those ones that are able to receive from us, and those are those ones that will have the ability to share that message as well and to hand it to their surroundings. And the intention of our hearts is important because corresponding to your intention and the purity of your heart that's how much you will receive while learning there can be a person that will sit with you in the same place in the same time and his heart will be in a different place his intention won't be as pure as yours and that's why he won't receive the wisdom he will receive other things, he will also come with conclusions and with understandings how to go and do other things in the world. And there are many, many people that their intentions are very, very foreign and very, very dark. And we must protect ourselves first of all from them and second, we must protect ourselves from having second thoughts or doubts on ourselves not to believe in ourselves, not to accept the real light of our soul's guidings from within means. In the beginning when a person wakes up to learn and he wants to understand and he wants to grow, so then there is a certain spark that is flaming inside of him, growing and expanding and calling him to learn to learn more, to expand his knowledge, to open his eyes and his ears for wisdom. But after a while, suddenly that learning becomes to be a habit. It becomes to be a habit. And then when it's a habit, your intentions are different and the level of purity of your heart is not the same and not equal. And then the learning that you're receiving when it's coming into your vessels it doesn't make the same effect to uplift you and to upgrade you and to bring you to better places. And that learning can also damage the person. This is why righteous people warned us and told us that the numeral value of the word Kabbalah, that means to receive, is equal to the numeral value of the word Ni'uf, adultery. It's so high and it's so pure and in a minute it can become the worst thing in the world. A person that his mind is in receiving like the real meaning of the word Kabbalah, receiving, he wants to receive. 
he will learn that Kabbalah in a way that will damage. Because that person that is surrounded with lust and desires, he just wants to receive pleasure for himself. And that lust for pleasure, for satisfaction, for physical joy, is bending and twisting his mind. And because of that wrong attitude, wrong intention, he will destroy the most beautiful relationships and the most innocent things in the world he will corrupt and will filth because that his heart is not aimed to the right place. The right place is that you can receive but with the intention to give, to satisfy someone else, to give the pleasure to someone else. The Bala Sulam said on relationship between, between men and women that the only satisfaction that a person allowed to have is the satisfaction from pleasuring his partner. That's the only pleasure that a person should have. That's the intention that a person should have while having a relationship. To see how to make your friend happy, to see how to make your soulmate happy and satisfied. That is the intention also of the learning. That while you're coming to learn, you're not allowed to learn that wisdom of secret with the intention to pleasure yourself, to find honor, to find satisfaction, to receive knowledge, to grow in Avodat Hashem while serving Hashem. All those kinds of pleasure and joy and satisfaction are foreign because we must fit ourselves to the will of the Creator. And the Creator, when He created the world, and He decided to reveal His good to us, and also to share that good with us, in His intention was to give us, from the highest level of good, the most good, the goodest that He could have given to us. And what is that good? It's Him Himself. Because He is the source of good. So in His intention, while creating us, His intention was to give Himself over to us. When we're asking to learn the wisdom of Hashem, we're not asking to learn information, to receive knowledge. We're begging for closeness to the Creator. We want to nullify ourselves to Him and become one with Him. To bend our will, to nullify, to cancel ourselves completely, to erase our being and just to become like He wants us to be. And He wants us to be happy. But the main happiness that the person can receive in this world is the joy of helping others, of sharing, of doing good in this world. No matter how much you will receive for yourself, it will never, will never be equal to the joy and satisfaction of making other people happy. That is a rule of creation. In the wisdom of Kabbalah, like we said in our first session, we said there are many, many books, many, many issues. Today I wanted to touch a little bit about, in, on the topic um, of the letters the holy letters of the ancient handwrite, the Jewish handwrite, the Aleph bit. It's written that the Creator created the world with the small letter He. The verse is saying that the Creator created the world and that how that it happened, Behi Baream, when those things been created. One of the verses in Bereshit. And when the letters are written over there in the word Behi Baream, when those things, all creations, been created, Behi Baream, so the letter He is written, the fifth letter, is written in a smaller way than all the rest of the letters in that word. So now, Behi Baream, we are learning from that, that with a small letter He, the Creator created the wide world with all of His details and all of His particles. Small letter He, you're pronouncing the letter He like 
H, it's just a breath of, he, of air. That's the way you spell. It's a letter with no voice. You barely, it's a whisper. You can just hear the air comes out of the speaker. So it means that the Creator, for him to create the world, it was the easiest thing of them all. He didn't even make a sound. No sound was even required for that, for all of the creation to take place. With the infinity that is treasured inside of it, all of how much that this world is complex and huge and deep and high, all of that for the Creator was a small breath of air that came out of His holy lungs. Just something so simple for Him to do. This is a way to describe His greatness. Now it's written that the Creator said, Huamar Vayehi. He said, and things took place in the world. <coughs> things that are happening now in the world are not a result of the creation that took place thousands of years ago. The creation status and existence even today in the present is a result of the creation of the Creator now, live, in this moment, in the present. And this is why we're calling the Creator Bore HaOlam, the Creator of the world, not the one that created in the past. He is not Bara Olam, the one that created the world in the past. He is creating the world as we speak. And why we're using that concept as we speak? Because the Creator is using our speech, our power of speech, to create the world. He made us human beings in His shape and in His figure. Now how can that be? Because we know for sure that the Creator Himself doesn't have no shape, doesn't have no figure. So how can it be that He created us in His shape and in His figure when He doesn't have it? We know that He doesn't have a body. He is above physicality, above sizes, above shapes. He is endless, blessed Him. So now, from that we're learning that simple and so deep conclusion that when He made us in His shape, it means that He made us also eternal and endless. And that is the light of our soul. Our soul's been carved down to this world from the throne of honor, from the respect and honor of the Creator Himself. We are the beams of light of the Creator in this world. Now when we are nullifying ourselves to Him, to listen to His voice, to be aware to His individual private supervision on us, when we are trying to listen to His messages, to His hints, to His guidings, with our heart and with our minds, with our senses, with the tools that He gave us for that purpose, for that cause, then we can deliver the light that He treasured inside of us and to achieve completion in this creation. We can bring complete redemption. We can bring down salvations and miracles to this world while aiming our hearts to the real purpose of our creation, nullifying ourselves to His divine will. But when the person is physically trapped in his confusions, in his lusts, in his desires, in his selfish needs, or even his fears, so then he is working out of his physicality, out of his physical shape and body, looking for physical comfort, for luxuries in this world, and I'm not saying it in a criticizing way. I'm, I'm not being judgmental while saying it. Because all of us, we know that we have our ups and we have our downs. And even the most hugest, giants, righteous people, they were falling as well and they failed as well. 
the Torah itself is rebuking and presenting and showing to us the failures of Abram, of Isaac, of Jacob, of the holy tribes, just that we will be aware to the fact that humans are humans and there is a way back. The way back is the path of tshuva that is needed and required in any level. The highest level of them all, there is a gate of tshuva in that level. Like King David was doing tshuva. So if King David, that is the inter eternal Mashiach of the wide world, he himself made tshuva, so who are we to skip that stage? It's required in every level and it's humbling. Yes, it is humiliating, but it's not a shame to be a bad tshuva. A Baal Tshuva, a person that needs to come back and fix his mistakes, is a humble person, means a righteous person, an honest person, a pure heart person. It doesn't mean that he is a sinner. A sinner is a person that is not doing Tshuva, is a person that is going and keep on destroying. But a person that learns the lesson, that is being educated and he loves the rebuke, he wants to learn and to work on himself, that is a noble person and a righteous man. Now, when we're saying the blessing, that everything is happening in the world by his speech, we're not saying that everything happened because that he said in the past. We're saying that everything become, now it's here, Bidvaro, by the power of his speech. Now he is talking. Now he is creating. Now when you will check yourself and try to find your inner nature, the way of your creation in the spiritual aspect, in your mind, in your emotions, you will find yourself that you are also a speaker. Even when you feel, you feel and you immediately translate your emotions into words. Immediately things take place in your mind in the shape of speech, of sentences, of words. That's how you interpret, understand and express yourself. So you have the power of speech. Now, who gave you the power of speech? The Creator. And where He gave it to you from? From His essence, from His inside. Like we said, that He created the world with the breath of His mouth, with a small letter H. He took out, blow out air from pure air, the air of those souls, from within, so who, whose spirit was the spirit that been given to us? The Creator's spirit himself. Now he gave us that soul, that particle of him, of the Creator himself, because we know that we have a godly soul, so it's part of heaven, chelek eloka mimaal, and with that particle we are working here in this world. Now, it's not a divided and cut particle from the Creator, it's a channel, it's a beam of light that can pull and transfer light from the divine world to this world. Now, where is the best place to start? With the letter Aleph, start in the beginning. The letter Aleph, the first letter in the Aleph bit, is written in a way that the there is a diagonal line that is crossing the letter in the middle. And you have a letter Yud that represents the Creator from the right side and tilt up and rising up. And you have the same letter Yud that is upside down on the left side, on the bottom, on the ground. This leg of the letter Yud is holding that diagonal and that leg of the letter Yud is leaning and counting on that same diagonal. Now the Zohar HaKadosh, Baal Sulam HaKadosh is describing that diagonal line as the sky. 
and the letter Yud that is divine and above and on the right side, it's the Yud of Hashem. It's the Yud that represents the Creator Himself and the Yud that is in the opposite direction, exactly in front but in the opposite way, represents our soul. Now, our souls here are in the same shape of the letter Yud that is above the sky, that is in the world to come, in the world that is world that is above, but in the opposite way. So, whatever you go through in life, when you want to compare yourself to Hashem, you need to transfer to the other side. So it means that things that you feel that might be wrong for you in a way, sometimes you need to understand that they are coming for your own good. Something sometimes that you feel that are bad for you, sometimes you need to understand in your own mindset that they are coming from the other side, from the side of the light. And this is why it's hard for you to accept them. Because the Creator made something and changed your position in a way that you will be trapped in physicality. And now you find it hard to interpret the spiritual message in a positive way. But it doesn't mean that that thing that happened to you really is bad. And also from the other side, good things. Things that you feel that are pleasuring you, that are making you happy. Sometimes those things can be dangerous for you, can be wrong for you. Because we as creations, as souls that have been sent to this world, are catching a place under limitations of time and space and weights and shapes and figures. So now we understand that sometimes a person should understand that what that happens to him, even though that he is like the letter Yud, even though that he represents the Creator, even though that he holds a holy soul inside of himself, still, because of the fact that in the nature of his creation, he is a prisoner in a physical body, so sometimes his body is interpreting things in a negative way, in an opposite way that contradicts reality. And he cannot recognize his own essence. He cannot recognize the fact that he is a letter Yud, like the same letter, divine letter Yud that is above and influence all the bounty, that bring down all the good. He finds himself in an awkward situation. He is upside down and he is grounded and he is bent and he fell and he is under the sky and he cannot find no connection and no one can use him because he's upside down. And he sees all those lackings. But all those lackings are coming only because that he let his physical mind judge his condition. And he's not putting his mind into the situation. He doesn't let the power of imagination explain to him the reality in a positive and spiritual way. That letter Yud is the same letter Yud like that Yud that is above. There is no difference between those two except of that they are in a different position. They are in a different location but they are similar, they are just the same. Now the war is ours. The war is ours to remind ourselves who we are. For that we need to learn. For that we need to put our minds into those holy learnings that we will find the power to uplift the sparks from the daily situations that we're experiencing. That we in the day, while working, while thinking, while learning, while trying to connect ourselves to the Creator, and even though that the physicality is fighting with us, and the physical world of imaginations, the world of life is trying to overpower on us and to convince us that we are physical creations, we must 
force our mind to remember the real nature of our creation. That even though that we are upside down, completely grounded, completely down, completely opposite from the shape of the Creator, the real truth is that we are similar to Him and He created us. What that gives us greatness that is divine. For that we need to learn. For that we need to learn. And now we learn the small tiny thing about the letter Aleph. I want to teach you now to skip from Aleph to Lamed. And by that we're going to make the connection between Aleph to Lamed. Lamed represents, the, Lamed is like the letter L in English. And in the Gemara, in the, in the Talmud, they're describing the letter Lamed. Lamed means, first of all, Lamed. A person is learning. He is a learner. When the, the letter Lamed is built in a way that is described in the Talmud as Migdal Poreach Ba'avir, a tower that flies in the air. A tower, it builds, it's got a very stable shape, but it flies in the air. What does it mean that it flies in the air? That it's got a very strong connection to heaven. So he is a learner, he is learning, that's the letter Lamed, and he is very well connected to heaven, to spiritual learning, that's his desire. He is not learning things in this world, he is learning things from the world of beyond. That's his learning. When you want to learn, you should learn from Lamed. You need to learn how to learn. When you want to learn, you need to learn from the world of beyond. You need to learn from the spiritual aspect of life. So now, you don't need to learn only spiritual issues. You don't need to learn only divine topics. You should learn also how to make money, how to use your, your alarm in, in, in your house. You need to learn many, many things, how to, 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 to use the, the microwave. You need to learn. but. When you are coming to learn, you need to put your mind that you are learning now divine learnings. That you are connecting yourself to the Creator even when you're upside down. Even when you are trapped in physicality. You need to set your mind to spiritual work to spiritual connection, to develop an inner channel to the Creator, an inner channel of faith that no matter what you do while being trapped in the physical world, you are connecting yourself from within, with the intention of your heart, to the Creator Himself. When we are connecting those fantastic, amazing two letters, the combination of them built the word God, El, Kel. When you connect the real nature of the creation, that the Creator made us in His shape, that we are divine and we're above limitations of physicality. And even though that we are trapped in this world, we are similar to Him in the spiritual nature of our soul, when we connect that truth of creation to the desire to learn the spiritual aspect of learning from every situation in life, that's how we create the existence of Kel, of God Himself, to find place in our world, in our life. And that's how you bring Hashem down to this world, while thinking and aiming your heart, while doing and working and playing and talking and thinking and sleeping and eating and making everything right in this physical world 
with a pure intention of your heart. By that, you're bringing down the divine supervision of the Creator and you are uncovering the godliness that this world works so hard to hide. And you're breaking the code by that. You alone in your kitchen at night while there's movies on your TV and you're trying to learn how to work with your microwave, you're bringing godliness down to this world when you aim your mind to connect yourself to the Creator through physicality. And you're not letting yourself fall into the trap of physicality thinking that you are a physical creation. And for an example, to make things simple, if you're now stuck in front of that microwave, don't know what to do with it, instead of hitting your head and saying, I don't know, and how can it be, and I worked with it so many times, and I forgot how to do it, I need to program, and you fall into that sorrow of exile, of physicality, then you lose Hashem, then you lose God, then you lose the spiritual aspect of it. But if you come while knowing that you are connected in the roots of your soul to the Creator and you want to understand a divine learning from that physical situation of yours and you're going to stand in front of the same microwave and you're going to aim your heart and pray. And you're going to say to the Creator, Okay, there is a lesson here. What do you want from me? I want to understand your will. You know what? I want to find you. I don't care about my food, not about the movie that is about to finish, not about my desires, not about my stress. I want to know why you stopped me. I want to know what you want from me. What is the purpose and the reason of this physical situation that you put me in, that test? In that moment, the sky and heaven will be opened and be revealed to you. Because you just reconnected yourself from the darkness to the light. And you became a pillar of light and all the deepest understandings of the Creator will be revealed to you. And what the no one else in the world can learn, you will learn in that moment. Suddenly you're going to understand exactly that maybe, for an example, you had a wrong intention. You didn't pay attention to something else. You just forgot Hashem and Hashem wanted to wake you up. Something is hidden inside that physical trap. But it's not a trap of the evil inclination. Don't give power to the devil, to the Satan, to the darkness. Put him aside. Kick him out of your life. Focus only in every obstacle, in every difficulty that you experience in life, in the pure intention of the Creator. Why did you brought me to this place? What do you want from me? This is real Kabbalah. This is real Kabbalah, this is practical Kabbalah. This is what that we received from our ancestors. To know that inside every particle of the creation, there is a whole endless world of infinity. That the Creator lives inside every detail and you can break it down. You can break it down to words, you can break it down to letters, and you can break the letters to parts. You can break every part to parts and you can go deeper and deeper in the spiritual intentions of every particle of the creation and to find God. And this is the Kabbalah that we received from our ancestors, from the real righteous ones that saw Hashem in every moment of their life. Every moment of their life. And you have that ability to. You have that inner gate inside of you and there is no one in this world that is able to close that gate. And that gate called the gate of tshuva. That you can come back to Hashem in Barach from within in every moment, in every situation, no matter which depths you reach in your falling, in your failures. You can always do tshuva and come back to Hashem. And the gate of tshuva is open to everyone that is sincere and honest and is seeking for the Creator Himself. 
and not seeking for honor and not seeking for success and pleasure and joy and satisfaction and not even rewarding the world to come. Rewarding the world to come is the biggest joke of them all, I think. It's a joke. To think about the world to come now when you're here in this world, who's got time to think about the world to come? There is one. We believe in it. Okay, there is much to do here. You have time to think about the world to come. You, you, you have such lust. The person, Bas Shalom, not on an individual, on myself, to think about the world to come, to think about how the Creator is going to reward me. Do I know if I even deserve to have a share in the world to come? Do I even fit into those calculations? Do I know what's going on in Heaven's Court? I don't have a clue. I know that I'm here in a mission. I know that there is a lot, a lot of work to do. And that's it. And that's where my story finished. I know I need to work. I know I need to run. I know I need to make sure that other people receive what they need. All the time if I'm being rebuked, I need to learn something from it. When I see something, I need to see, okay, what Hashem wants from me. I need to fulfill my destiny. I need to become that person that that divine creator sent me to be. And that's the mission of my life. And with the tools that He gave me, I'm going to find Him. And not only for myself, like we said, not with the intention to receive for myself, just to give it to others. In the letters of the holy language, the ancient language, there is so much wisdom. And that's why the Creator used that language to create the world. For an example, the letter Gimel and the letter Dalet are standing one after the next. The letter Gimel is like G, letter Dalet is like the letter D. So first we have Gimel and then we have Dalet. G and then D. That's the way that we write the letters, that's the or order of letters in, that, in our holy language. Gimel looks like a person that is running. It looks like a letter Vav that holds the wisdom. We know that the holy tablets were in the size of six, six, uh, um, six amot, six, six. Mm, 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 how do you define amot? Uh, less than a, it's it's measurement. Inches. It's six inches. units of measurement. Inches. Amot. Inches. No, it's it's bigger. It's it. It was like that. <laughs> it, so it represents the wisdom. Vav represents the one of one of of of. of the letters, letter Vav explanation, interpretation, is the wisdom because the size of the holy tablets were six on six. So Vav is part of the letter Gimel and the letter Gimel got another leg that is running forward. So that letter Gimel is a wise person, a gifted person that is running. And that's why the letter Gimel is showing to us that he is Gomel, Gimel, like Gomel, and the next letter is Dalet, Gomel Dalil. Gimel Gomel means that that person is a man of charity, and he's running to give charity. That's the meaning of the word Gomel that is similar to the letters Gimel, that it's the name of that letter itself. So now, when you using that wisdom of a person, and you think, okay, what should I do with my life? You start running. You start running for charity, to give, to support, to heal, to help. That's a real wise person. That his actions are greater than his wisdom. That he doesn't think, oh, the wisdom is so great. He's running to share and to give it to others. He's using the gifts that he received to make other people grow, to make other people happy. That is his intention. And who is he running after? Dalet. Letter Dalet is a, looks like a door. That's the letter Dalet. It looks like a door. But if you put Gimel here and the Dalet is here, so Dalet is showing the back of it to the Gimel. So it's teaching you that when that wise person is running to do charity and to give, so he's coming from the back. He's not facing the poor and telling him, here, I came to give you charity, here, take money. He's coming in the darkness. He's coming from the back. 
He's putting the charity in his pocket. He doesn't want no one to know what he's doing in this world. He's doing things quietly, in a humble way. He's doing it for the poor and not to receive pleasure and joy and satisfaction of honor from the poor. Without even the poor to know who is that generous person that knocked on his door, he already put the envelope under his door and gave him the money that he needs. And that was his action, an act of grace, an act of kindness. This is the real wise person that knows the purpose of creation. Now, inside every letter there are deep, deep learnings like we just said on Aleph, on Lamed, on Gimel, on Dalet. We have many, 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 many learnings that we, conclusions and wisdom that we can bring out from the letters. The secret is that even if you don't know while talking and using the holy letters you are bringing down the bounty that is treasured inside of them now how do you how will you make sure that good things will come out of your actions and not bad because from the letter Gimel, you can say Gomel Dalim, a generous person that makes charity. But the letter Gimel builds the word Ganav, a thief as well. So you can become Ganav or you can become Gomel Dalim. You can be generous and righteous man and, and giver. And you can be a thief that steals with the same letters. So what will set the result, the good result, and will redeem you to the good from the bad? the intention of your heart even if you're not aware to all the combinations to all the qualities to all the wisdom to all of the secrets of the creator what that he treasured inside every part of his creation when your heart is aimed to the right place the results will go to the right place when you are aiming your heart to do God's will even if you don't know how to wash you will wash. Something will help you and from heaven they're going to supervise on you that you will learn and find the right way and purification and holiness will surround you and will fill you. Even if you don't know exactly what is the Jewish rule and what is the halakha, if your mind is aimed to the purpose and your desire is holy and good, you will see good results from your actions even if your actions will be wrong. Even if your actions will seem to be opposite and fail failures, that's how it will look physically. I didn't say the blessing. I didn't wash my hands. I didn't make it to the synagogue. I forgot to put my kippah. I didn't put filin. I didn't know how to keep that halakha in Shabbat. I didn't know how to learn. I didn't know how to pray. All those things they look physically, in our physical eyes, wrong. You messed up. You forgot. You didn't say the blessing. Bottom line, looks like a failure. Looks like a down. But, like we said, the nature of this creation is the divine creator. He sent that beam of light that it's the shape of your soul down to earth. Under that diagonal line of sky. And when his soul, the godly soul, found its position and its place in the physicality, it was in an opposite way to the way that's supposed to be. So even if you find yourself upside down and you find yourself as a failure, it's only because you look at yourself through the physical glasses of the world of life, like the, the Zohar Kadosh, the Holy Zohar is calling this world Alma de Shikra, the world of lie. And your eyes are lying to you and twisting the right spiritual level of your actions and twisting it to your mind that you won't be able to recognize the good from the bad. That's the result of the sin of Etzadat that Ed, Adam and Eve, they sinned and their mind being confused, they lost track after the good. 
and good seems to be bad and bad seems to be good and now we're finding it hard to define between good and bad and to recognize good out of the bad. So if you find yourself as a failure and you're being judgmental on yourself, you must remind yourself that you have physical lens, lenses, you have physical glasses that are blocking you from seeing the good out of the bad. And probably if you see negativity inside of yourself or in other people, probably you're wrong. Why? Because the Creator, He created the world. And there is no bad in this world at all, except of in our mindset. And our mindset sometimes is wrong because it is trapped in a selfish will of desires and comfort of our physical body. So when we are trapped in physicality and something is happening and it's violating our comfort, it's destroying what that we hope to have physically, so we feel rejection. We don't want to experience that. We want that thing to stop. So we interpret that thing as a bad thing. But it is our twisted interpretation based on our physical glasses that are making things look upside down. But the truth is that it's all divine and heaven controls in this world completely. And when you put your mind into it, like we said on the letter Lamed, that you want to find the divine message, the spiritual wisdom of why those physical things are happening in your life, then you will be a real learner that is able to pull wisdom from heaven. And the sky will be open for you and things will be revealed to you in ways that never been revealed to no one, to no one before. There are things that except of the eye of God, no one else except of you will see. And Elijah the prophet is promising that that person, that the divine spirit will hover on him and he will have the access to the ancient archives, the wisdom of the Creator, to the wisdom of Kedem of the earliest days. He can be a Jew or a non-Jew, a man or a woman, a slave or a free person. Elijah the prophet is promising that corresponding to the goodness of your actions, no matter who you are, the Divine Spirit will hover on you. You don't need to be Jewish to be in touch with Hashem. You don't need to be a man to be in touch with Hashem. You don't need to be Hasid, you don't need to be anything. You just need to understand the nature of creation. The real secret of creation is the secret of how the Creator created you. If you have an inner desire to unite yourself with the good, with the truth, with the Creator, no one in the world can take that part from you. That's you. That's who you are. And you need to fight for that part to put it in the peak of your priorities, always to be good, to express the light of your soul, your goodness, the qualities that the Creator treasured inside of you, no matter who you are. Because the truth is that you don't know who you are. For an example, the holy books are saying that the soul of a convert is a Jewish soul in a, in a non-Jew body. He born from a non-Jew mother and the holy books are saying that he is a Jewish soul. So it means that he is a Jewish soul that is still trapped in a physical non-Jew body that needs to go through a certain process of conversion. And then by completing that process, the light of his soul will shine in a different way. But that soul was inside of him from the moment that he came down to the world. Now let's say that that person, that convert, is waking up only when he's 70 years old. And 69 years of his life he was going and being who that he was. 
without even thinking about Judaism because he woke up to Judaism only when he was 70 years old. So you want to tell me that he knew who he was? He didn't know. He didn't have a clue about himself and he was that person that he will become in the age of 70 even when he was 7 years old, even when he was 17 riding a bike on the, in the street and he didn't know who he is. He didn't know. And you also don't know who you are. You also don't know who you are. Rabbi Chaim Vital was the greatest student of the Ariya Kadosh. Rabbi Chaim Vital came to the Ariya Kadosh and the Ariya Kadosh was talking to Rabbi Chaim Vital about Rabbi Chaim Vital, his student's greatness. And he was praising him and telling him, you're the greatest one of all my students and you're the best and for you I came down to the world. We're talking about a pillar of fire, the light of the world, the Ariya Kadosh, that he's talking to one of his students and praising him and telling him that he is even more important than him, than he, the rabbi himself. The rabbi is explaining to the student that the student is standing in a level that he, the rabbi, had to come down to this world to teach him because he can become Mashiach of the world. Can he? Because he can become the redeemer of the world, the savior of the world. And Rabbi Chaim Vital was not able to receive those compliments. He was rejecting them and arguing with Ariya Kadosh and telling him, no way, who am I? In this generation we have giants. We have um, people that are so righteous and, and, and those are righteous people that are familiar to us, that are known and famous to us. Holy, holy, righteous people. And all of those righteous people were nothing compared to the soul of Rabbi Chaim Vital by the words of Darya Kadosh, that he was the righteous man of that generation. And he's testifying on him that he was a 30 years old kid walking around between those giants humbling himself and looking at himself as a piece of dirt and, and, and cannot understand why all those compliments are, are washing him. The Ariya Kadosh told him, listen, you are that one. And if you're not going to follow my advice and dedicate your life to learn from me and stop bringing other students all of the time, just sit and learn because I need to teach you. If you're not going to listen to me, I'm going to have to go out from this world because I've been sent to teach you. And Rabbi Chaim Vital refused. Rabbi Chaim Vital couldn't handle those compliments. And after one year, the Ariya Kadosh passed away. And all of what that we received from the Ariya Kadosh through his student, Rabbi Chaim Vital, was only in a couple of years that they were learning together. That's it. And we have tons of information and nothing compared to what that we were supposed to achieve by Rabbi Chaim Vital if he would get the wisdom of his rabbi <coughs> that told him, you're greater than me. You're twice as much than I. You don't know who you are. Even if you find yourself so small. And Rabbi Chaim Vital is telling him, listen, but I know that I'm sinning. I failed today in the field. It's written in the book Shara Gilgulim. I know that I'm a sinner today. I had an argument with my friend. We were walking in the field and he said something that was so annoying. And I shouted him in the field and I was angry. I know myself, the, the Rabbi Chaim Vital is saying. I was upset and it's a sin. Today I sinned. Today I failed in anger. The Ariya Kadosh told him, you know what's your problem? You think that in heaven they're judging you like you're judging yourself. But in heaven they're not judging you on that anger at all. Because that anger took place in your life because of the nature of your creation. And then he started opening the sky for him and explaining to him, you are a soul that is coming from the root of the soul of Rabbi Akiva and on and on. And explaining to him all the combinations of spirit and, 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 and soul of his creation, of who that he is. And explaining to him that those failures are a must, are something that must happen to him. And no one is judging you, Rabbi Chaim Vital, on your failures. Because your failures are coming to you because of the nature of who that you are. Not because that you're a sinner. Yes, you sin. Yes, you messed up. But no one is looking on that sin in the way that you judge yourself. From heaven, they're not judging you on it. 
and he gives, uh, Ria Kadosh gives an example to Rabbi Chaim Vital from King David and telling him even on King David it's written that he failed and even him, he never been judged on that because King David came from the root of Saul of this and that and explaining him and telling him that in the secret of lifetimes King David had to fail to find balance in his future life as the eternal king of our nation and the wide world. So he had to fail and they didn't judge him for it. And he stood in the test and he was strong enough to admit that he failed and he didn't been rejected by his failure. He didn't been ashamed and insulted and down and depressed because of his failure. He just did tshuva and admit and was strong enough to say, I want to fix myself, and became the fourth will of the holy chariot of the Creator, ahead to the three ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, higher than them. So you, as a person, in this lifetime, instead of judging yourself with your own eyes, and with those physical glasses of ours, that are showing to us things upside down and in a bent and physical way, we need to remind ourselves that we are godly souls that came from a divine root, from a divine source, and to judge ourselves favorably and to seek for godliness in every situation in life. And by that, breaking the code of physicality and uncovering the true potential of this world to be revealed. The godliness itself to overpower darkness and that the light will control it all. Amen. Can you hear it? Thank you very much. Is there anything else to say? Um, the class will continue in two weeks. <laughs> and again, two weeks after that, um, for me, it's an amazing experience to come and to share a little bit from what that I learned and and, uh, and 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 found in life, and um, and I believe in your potential. Every one of you can achieve for sure more than I achieve, and I'll tell you why. Because I started my tshuva process from zero. I grew up in a secular house with no connection to Judaism, without keeping Shabbat, without eating kosher, nothing. And, 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 and my path started somewhere in, 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 in my 20s. And, and, and from nothing, without knowing how to wash my hands and how to keep Shabbat and how to, what is kosher and what is not, without knowing all those things, I just really dedicated my life to Torah Avodah, into, into the will of Hashem. And I found so much that I realized from that, from my individual life experience, that it's a potential that opens for all. Because I really started with huge debts with nothing in my hands. I was clubbing and drinking and drugs and whatever. And, and out of that darkness, the Creator just like handpicked me, took me out of, of the darkness and, and brought me to huge lights. And, and, and also the, the path is, is, is long and in front of us. Who knows what we can achieve? So if I achieved it, and if I received it, and I know that I wasn't worthy, I wasn't even close to it. So it's, for me it's simple that it's a free gift as a result of the loving kindness of the Almighty. And if He gave it to me, so why that He won't give it to other people that are in a similar situation of me? Might be even better, I don't know. So. I believe in your true potential, in the potential of every individual. And like we said, even like Elijah the prophet said, even not the Jewish, even not the man, even whatever, even a slave, like a slave, a slave, a slave, doesn't need to be a slave in a different century. A slave today, a slave in physicality, slave for his lusts, slave for his fears, a slave to his boss, for a slave to his mortgage, slave in reality. <laughs> Slave, <laughs> slavered by his fears, by his anxiousness, by, 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 by his depression. Slave. The Creator is promising you by Elijah the prophet, the divine spirit, the connection to the ancient archives, the wisdom of God is available for you. 
and it depends in the purity of your actions, in your good desire, in how much you aim your heart to do the right thing as much as you can. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We hope you enjoy this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.